Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a clownfish with some sea anemone. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's now in chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Dixie Cotton Canvas Board from Fredericks. Um, I have just coated it with a very light coat of quinacridone magenta. I squirted on um, a little bit of glazing medium, sprayed the whole thing with water, and then put a little bit, um, probably a thumbs worth of um, quinacridone magenta on there and just use a cloth to wipe it all on so you can see it's it's very kind of transparent um, layer of quinacridone magenta you could use like orange yellow any of these colors that we're using in our um, sea anemone would work as your background ground but it'll just give us a head start on our painting to have it colored um, I'm going to be using just a few brushes um, today uh, from Princeton and I've got some Filberts, so the 6100 series, these long handled ones, they're, I've got a 4 and an 8 filbert, and then a 12 and an 8 bright. And then for some of the more detailed areas, um, we're going to need um, like an angle brush or a round brush or some sort. So I've got the Velvet Touch uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch angle, a number four round, a number one round. Uh, 18 aught short liner and three aught round. I'm not sure if I'm going to need these little bitty ones, but um, I just kind of pulled together the brushes that I think I might need. Um, this one's a two aught round, and then I've got my blenders in different sizes. These are the quarter inch, three eighths inch blenders, and the Deerfoot uh, stippler in the three eighths inch size, and the Fix It brush in the number two. So um, these blue handles are the Princeton Select, the reds are the Velvet Touch Princeton, and then, as I said, the 6100 series Summit series in the green handles. All right, let's get going here. Going quickly. Yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. I need, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I've got uh, carbon black, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, uh, yellow, Indian yellow hue. Uh, this one I just put out at the end there because I noticed that it is very close to the color of the um, actual fish. So this one is cadmium yellow deep. But if you don't have that one, just use um, the Indian yellow and cadmium yellow medium or a, a medium yellow um, mixed with kind of an orangey color. It's just a, like a deeper orange yellow um, so this is cadmium yellow dark um, medium and light and then this one is thalo green yellow shade cobalt teal thalo blue green shade with uh, white here this is the light thalo blue um, ultramarine blue light ultramarine here with white um, quinac i'm sorry dioxazine purple quinacridone magenta cadmium red uh, light and cadmium orange and then this is um, titanium white and zinc white. And then this is my glazing medium. All right. Glazing liquid, I guess it's called. All right. Phew. That was <laughs> mouthful. All those quinacridones and doxazines and thalo. Actually, the thalo is a shortened version. It's like thalo cyanine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a... Uh, all these colors have these long, long-winded names. All right, so um, I'm not really going to do the drawing much. Um, I kind of started to draw them out, and then I just erased it all because I realized I'm going to just paint in the coral first, or not the coral, yeah, the coral and the um, sea anemone first, and then we'll paint, we'll draw in our um, fish. But I do want to kind of mark out sort of the general area he's going to be. So he's going to be in this area here. And that way I'll know sort of where um, to place my coral because some of it is kind of um, coral and sea anemone. I bet I'm going to say that the whole show now, now that I started it. <laughs> I know myself. Okay, so he's sitting, he's taking up most of the room here. <laughs> he's sitting right on the third. His nose is kind of right on that third there. And then he takes up the whole um, two thirds on this side. <clears throat> and he kind of sits sort of in the third this way 
So his face kind of sits right in the third, right in here. If you did your lines this way. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and start in with some, just blocking out some colors back here. Um, if you're new to our channel, welcome. We, um, I paint these live, so I haven't painted them ahead of time. And you're just kind of seeing the process that I do to kind of figure out how to, um, you know, bring a painting to life. So you kind of see me working out, when to see me working out my colors and um, my composition and everything as we go. So uh, fingers crossed it'll go well today. Well, <laughs> you never well, know. Ju judging on your past videos, I have high hopes. High hopes. All right. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, we've only done, what, 500 and something. <laughs> so. Well, we as Almost. in you. True, <laughs> true. I've done like two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I grabbed some carbon black, um, a little bit of the doxazine purple and um, ultramarine blue, and making a dark, dark purpley blue. That black is going to really tint it dark, and I'm just going to kind of fill in this upper corner with this. Don't come down too far with it, and I'm just feathering out the edges here because I'm going to add other colors to it and then over here it kind of comes in around my coral and there's some of it kind of peeking in in between some of the coral so i'm just or not coral i keep saying that anemone i, I know i i, okay, I, I do this start. i anemone anemone mana, it's, mana. Not, it's not an anemone it's anemone mana, mana. okay whatever You're close enough ornament yeah. Yeah. It's going to be one of those. I can tell already. So it looked like an octopus swam by right now. What? I said it looked like an octopus that swam by right now with that black inky stuff. Ah. Okay. I follow you now. Sorry. You lost me for a minute. All right. Adding a little bit more of the blue and... Um, purple here. I added a little bit of white right there, but I don't really like that. So I'm going to use this darker kind of bluish color up in this corner. And I haven't cleaned out my brush, so it's just kind of mixing with what I've got going on here already. And I'm just going to kind of fill in down. Now some of these um, anemone are going to come up over the top of it. So um, We don't have to worry about getting it going around them right now. All right, so that'll be our kind of start of our background there. And then let's just start working our way forward. So I'm going to get um, some of the light phthalo blue, maybe a little bit of the phthalo blue. And again, I haven't cleaned out my brush, so it's kind of mixing with it a little bit. And I'm just going to start this fuzzy stuff that I see back here in this background. Now, if you wanted to, you could switch to a different brush that's kind of that fuzzy texture like the Deerfoot Stippler or something like that um, for this part, but this paint is still wet, so it's blending okay for me. Let me get some more of that brighter blue. Thalo blue and ultramarine blue. It's really kind of ultramarine right along that edge, and I'm just going to go over this edge right here where it transitions. Okay, we have <clears throat> we have some people questioning the choice of nail polish color. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's a little bit bright for this. I was going to go with an orange, but tomorrow's video is the bonus video. Oh, uh, so it's more it's for so, tomorrow? Yeah, it's more for tomorrow. For the uh, Patreon people. Right. Yeah. All right, grabbing a little bit of that. Let's get a little bit of the light ultramarine blue. I think I want to clean out this brush because it's kind of going on sort of muddy. And I think I want it more bright. It's not... It's not that gray in this area, so I'm going to get a little bit more of that. Let's go ahead and get some of this cobalt teal. Start throwing some of that in here. 
And again, I'm just going to go right over the top of this fish. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Just adding these colors. Let's go ahead and add some over here. Let's get a little bit of that phthalo blue, mix that in. You can see that when I'm picking up my colors, though, I'm not blending it straight up over into the color. I'm kind of taking it down onto a clean spot away from the color so that um, I don't pollute the, the actual color there so I can go back to it and get more of it later. All right, there we go. So getting all this filled in here. There are some areas in here that are kind of that purplish color. So I'm going to get some of the purple in my light ultramarine blue and mix some of that and do that. You can leave some of this, the undertones showing through just a little bit here and there too if you want. But getting some purple going on here. Get some white, add that. Add a little bit of water every now and then as you're working to keep your paints moist and flowing around. If they get too sticky, if they start to dry, they'll get kind of sticky. So just make sure that you're adding water to your brush and your paints as you work from time to time. We got a pen Getting question. more blue here, a little bit more purple. Yep. Um, somebody wants to know if you would know off the top of your head mm -hmm. it, what the difference between the Pigma Sakura FB pen mm -hmm. and the Pigma Micron PN um, the, the, I have both, I think the Micron, um, are, are like a metal nib and they're really, really just tiny. And then the Pigma Sakura is a more of a felt tip. Are they both archival? Yes, they should be both exactly the same kind of ink. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for the little diversion there. No, it's fine. Got to ask the questions from the fans if I can. <laughs> I, You're awesome to answer those kind of questions. I appreciate it. I, I enjoy it. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah, because I'd be over here making stuff up. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> I, I, I do believe it, actually. <laughs> Just like something you would do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Adding, I really no rhyme or reason. You you really can't go wrong with this. There's not. Uh, there's not really a wrong way of doing this. We're just kind of putting in these blendy little areas back here. So, just kind of building up. All these blue and purple tones, you know, here and there. I'm going to get some lighter color in here now and put some of this lighter. It's all kind of fairly dark. And I'm going to get a, grab a little bit of the green and mix up a light green with my white. And just kind of using the rounded edge of that brush to create these little rounded shapes that I'm seeing in the background. So just kind of using it to build in these. These areas, okay. I'm going to use the edge of the brush and just kind of come across here and do some ledges things and we're going to kind of simplify this painting today I think um, you know make it a little bit more beginner friendly a little bit looser than the ultra realistic style that I do most of the time so if you're like wondering why we're kind of doing it this way that's why we're just going to kind of use a little bit bigger brushes and just try to kind of keep it simplified it'll still look you know, like the reference photo somewhat, but I think I want to uh, go through this a little bit faster and show you how to do that. 
Okay, so we're getting to the point now where our paints are going to start to get kind of dry and sticky, so we really won't be able to add any more um, new to them. This area is dry up here, though. I'm going to do one more layer of the light blue up there. Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, white. And then I'm going to get some of that background color. Kind of blend over it a little bit. And then get some of the brighter blue. This brush is really not great for what I'm trying to do here with the blending. So I'm going to get the Deerfoot Stippler here. I'm going to use that background color and just smudge off that top edge so it's a little bit softer and smudges into that background color. I'm going to do this in just even though it's going to be sea anemone later just to fill it in. Just blend it off. I haven't wet this brush down so it's dry and it's it works best when it's dry for this kind of thing. So I'm going to get some white and some of that blue. And I'm going to go from the underside and blend up into that edge there. And I can feel that the paint is still kind of wet right here. It's trying to see how it's, when I go over it, it's trying to lift off that paint. It's not like putting down new paint. That's because that area is trying to dry. So let me just put down a little thicker paint right there. And then I, I really can't do much. I'm not gonna go over that area again. I'm just gonna kind of leave it a little bit thicker. Okay, we'll just leave that and come back to it once it's dry completely. <clears throat> we can put as many layers as, as we want on with acrylics pretty much, but we just have to let them dry in between because if you don't, they it, it gets at some point you just kind of get these wet layers underneath and as you're trying to put more paint on the layer underneath is not allowing it to stick and it, it move it's moving around and it'll kind of actually lift off and stick to your brush that you're trying to paint new paint onto and then that area gets like this weird it's almost like it resists the paint after a while um, if you keep trying to add more and more to that same area and and like you know so you just kind of know you kind of start it it's going to look like a hot mess at first, but you just keep adding more layers to it until it starts to look right. Um, all right, I cleaned out my brushes and I've just kind of dried this one off so that I can use it later because I want it to be dry, as, as dry as possible when I'm using it. So let's go back to this brush though. And um, I'm going to do the middle part of the sea anemone. So I think I'm going to use the Indian yellow hue and some white. And might use just a touch of, of that light phthalo blue. Maybe a little bit of the magenta. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell what color this is in here. It's It's sort of catching some light. So it's got all kinds of colors happening. Um, there's some blues and some, there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda do that in the middle part. This is the area right um, underneath all of the anemone there. Kinda just the belly of the anemone. We have another question. Okay. Um, they want to know why a little bit more yellow, uh, phthalo, 
I'm sorry, getting a little bit more quinacridone magenta. Sorry, go ahead. Why put the magenta as a base if it's all going to be covered up? Um, it does. It does glow through. You can see. You can't really see, but it it does. It does glow underneath. It. Um, some of the layers are more transparent than others, and so those transparent layers um, that are going over the top of this will show that color through. And you can, like I said, you can use um, yellow, orange, um, you know, any of those colors that we're using um, in these upper layers for that under layer, and it would be fine. It's just, um, it just saves time, and it gives you kind of a ground. It's, it's also easier to see what colors and the values that you're working with when you have a color on your canvas. So I'm mixing up the quinacridone magenta and the quinacridone burnt orange here. So when you've got a color color down already, it just it just kind of makes all your subsequent layers easier to um, judge, you know, kind of what darkness and things to make them. If that makes sense. And see, I'm going over this, but these two colors are transparent, so I'm seeing this this blue underneath it. It's uh, it's a pretty common. Most oil painters do it. Most, you know, um, in fact, it's if you you know look at how the you know Rembrandt and all of them um, did their paintings, they all always started with a canvas that was you know either like a yellow ochre or some sort of brownish sometimes blue you know just different um tones that they always you know would start with a ground base color and paint it over it it's just kind of and sometimes i don't do it you know sometimes i get lazy and i just kind of paint um, directly onto the white canvas but if you have a color down it just makes it less daunting to add more colors and things once they once it's already down it's like you're not it's like you the ice is already broken you know <laughs> there's nothing pristine about it anymore you're not like you know ruining your canvas or anything somehow it's psychologically too it kind of helps you get past that first initial like fear of messing things up or something you know that's kind of innate in any painting that you're doing. It's kind of the normal sort of thought process that happens, you know. Because as soon as you start putting paint down, you know, whatever it is that you've got in your head that you're trying to paint, you know, it obviously doesn't look anything like my reference photo at this point. And, and if you don't realize that your painting has to go through these kind of stages of, you know, ugliness or you know unfinishedness or whatever um until it you know until they do get resolved um then you know you can kind of panic or and you know you can end up starting to do things that you don't that you're not ready to do you know so you know I could start trying to put my fish in at this point I see a lot of new painters do that where they would you know start with the fish instead of starting at the back and working your way forward um Doing your under layers is really, really important. Okay, getting, I'm just going back and using these same colors that I used before. So I'm sorry, I'm not saying exactly which ones, but it really doesn't honestly matter the, the color um, in this area. It's just kind of, I'm just trying to kind of pick out different colors to put in different places here. Some purple, put some of that back in. I'm switched to my Deerfoot stippler though, so I can kind of blend them out a little bit easier. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to do with that background part. It's pretty, you know, nebulous in our photograph. It's not not super resolved. I'm going to add some more brighter areas though. Just a few. By kind of doing it in a circle, I'm kind of avoiding that kind of fuzzy edge that this brush has, so I'm getting more of a rounded look, almost like the bokeh effect that we're seeing in our photograph. 
that effect where the background is blurry and everything kind of turns to like dots. Okay. I've got some really bright blue area right in there, so I'm going to try to get some of that in there. Well, you got another question. Okay. Uh, the person says that it seems like their paint is sticky. Okay. So any... Uh, just add more water to it. Okay. Um, yeah. And they, they will get sticky. And you may be working with it while it's trying to dry, too. You know, you may be overworking your areas and not letting them dry in between steps. So, because they'll get sticky, um, you know, if you keep working at them, like what happened up here when we were trying to add color to that area that was trying to dry. Um, so... And right now I'm just looking at making sure that I've got really light areas and really dark areas in back here because there's there's some, you know, areas that are, there's, if you don't have it, it'll just be kind of like flat, you know. So by having these really dark areas and really light areas in here, we can kind of add some dimension to it. And this area is a little bit more in focus, so it's kind of more like, got a little bit more detail so I'm going to go ahead and do the stippling on this side with this brush and just let those fibers spread out and create that kind of coral look like that and I'm getting some of that light light phthalo blue here and really, I can't do much more with this be until I do this background area because I've already got. Okay, that looks good. Pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and stop there. And I'm going to get some more of that magenta now and some white. And I'm spraying my canvas down, or my palette down here, too, to keep it moist while I'm working. And I'm just going to start to kind of start putting in some of these shapes that I'm seeing going over this dark area. Those are going to take a couple coats to cover that dark up, so I want to go ahead and start doing that. And I'm just going to set my brush down and kind of let it create those shapes for me. Get some of that burnt orange here. Some of these are kind of blurry back here, so they're not all going to be this color. some of the purple going to go that purple and blue mixture that we had right here gonna use some of that to do in between so right now it looks like an abstract painting of a punk rock snail <laughs> Oh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Got a mohawk hair. Is that his back? Yep, his shell. You could just kind of put, yeah. make, round it out. And just put a couple eyes and we're done. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Oh, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grabbing some. Cool. Uh, what color is that? Cadmium orange. I hope everybody's doing great today. We're springtime here in the central part of the United States. Yeah. 
allergy season as it's known. Yeah, it is. It is bad this year. I I was checking out our seedlings out there, our tomato plants. Out, I'm adding just some more of the orange to this yellow color that we used before the Indian yellow color from down here. And um, yeah, so I was I was checking out my plants, and they all had this kind of these like little I don't know. It looked like white kind of spots in the all along them but they were kind of long and they were in the veins you know like like the veins of the plants and they have these like little long um white spots in there and i thought it was a disease or something you know so i was starting to freak out like they're starting to get a you know some sort of thing and they're baby so we've already killed half of them from sun scald because we didn't harden them off before we set them outside so that's we, we've pretty much done everything you really shouldn't do um, this year with our <laughs> plants so we've tried to we've pretty much killed off most all of our our new first crop of baby plants anyhow so we 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 only started gardening like our garden the our current garden last year you know so we it had been several years since we've done it so anyhow so going back to the the plant um getting a little bit more quinacridone magenta here i'm just going between these oranges and magentas there's really no rhyme or reason that much um just kind of doing different tones um anyhow so i kind of was like rubbing on the plant you know just to kind of see what if it was like stuck on there or what and it all rubbed off and then i went and looked and all of them were doing that and then one of the plants had it like all the way along and i realized it was pollen mm -hmm. it's pollen getting caught in the on my plants and we've got so much pollen going on that yeah so i thought it's not a disease it's just pollen mm -hmm. <laughs> thankfully <laughs> uh, what brush are you using right now this is the same one that we've been using the eight filbert okay eight yeah filbert. yeah so we watched a video there's a there's a couple in central arkansas here that has a youtube channel and we follow them because you know obviously they're in the same area so we can get some good tips and their video they put out yesterday was about hardening plants, which is about a week too late for yeah. us. <laughs> so we're like, we're going to do a video of what not to do. <laughs> it's about. Take everything that she said to do and do the complete opposite. And that's what we did. That's what we did. That's exactly what we did. So here at the Anderson Horticultural Hospice. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. I get so frustrated with us sometimes. <laughs> But my potatoes are doing good. Yeah. I got to hill them, I think. I might. I might. Uh, you got what? I still need to hill them, I think. Hill them. Oh, yeah. yes. I thought, I, I don't know which I thought you said. It wasn't that. <laughs> All right, getting some cadmium yellow medium now and some white, and I'm just going to do this. I realized I covered up my, this kind of dark area in here, which I don't know if it matters, but it kind of does to me, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then some of these ones in front, I don't want to do too much detail on any of them yet because they're still just the first layers, but... I do I do want to start kind of working these ones in front, but I think I'm going to do a few more of these background ones, get these finished, and then we'll start doing the second layer. So let's go ahead and continue over here with these. Um, I'm sort of going by the image, but, you know, you can tell that I'm not really being super particularly careful about it. Um, I'm going back through here and adding some second layers to some of these with this little bit more yellow color.
and some purple. Just doing some like darker ones that are kind of faded out in the background there. This is where I'm going in with that blue here and making sure that I've got the blue color in between these. All right, there we go. Every now and just cleaning off that brush when I'm going back to my yellows because I had purple in there and I didn't want to get that purple in my yellow it would turn it kind of a brownish color which I don't want so let's get a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange here with my orange I got a little bit started with a little bit of yellow too and get a little bit of white maybe a little bit of the magenta so I've got a couple different so this one's like more of a uh, salmon color. We use that over here. This will be kind of the transition color between the blue and where my fish is going to go. My fish is going to be right in here, covering most of this up. So just, but I do want some of these peeking out right here. And I'm going to use a little bit brighter orange for some of them. Okay, and then going over the top of this area down here, let me get the cadmium orange light here, or I'm sorry, cadmium red light. I'm going to do the ones down here in this area with that. And these are all very like blurry and things, so they're not super resolved. When I say resolved, I just mean like in focus and, you know, clearly lined out. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of fuzz out that borderline. That there, I got a good fuzz, you know, between the the um, pink and the background. Our tail is going to sit right in here. I'm going to get a little bit more pink down here, though. This is the magenta, a little bit of white. I'm just going to use a little bit of it down here and kind of carry this out. Just a little bit more right there into that corner. Okay, let's go ahead and use some of that in here. Okay, and then I'm going to use this color again up in here. Just give these ones another layer now, now that they're dry. These have kind of a light outline, so I'm going to use the white and go along one side of them. Our light's coming from this direction in our photo. So the sides of these are getting lit up on some of them. We get a little bit of orange this time, or yellow, I mean. Some of these, we'll do some yellow on these ones, on these orange ones. Okay, 
get some of that orange, put that on as well. So just a matter of kind of layering these these background ones here until we kind of get them resolved enough that we can start adding the ones on the top. Put, start. And they have all these beautiful oranges and yellows and pinks so really you can't go wrong if you as long as you kind of do some of these ones in the background a little bit more muted like they're a little bit darker and they're probably darker than I have them here so I probably need to add just a little bit more of the darker colors here getting the quinacridone burnt orange making sure that these are a little bit darker back here And the quinacridone magenta, maybe a little bit of purple even. I'm kind of darkening up this area where they're coming down into behind this fish. Okay, thank you. Told Mark to tell me when I'm getting close to an hour or so, because I didn't want to spend more than an hour on the anemone here. So I think we're making decent time. All right, let's, so I've got this dark color. Now I can start putting the lighter anemone on top. Gonna get some yellow and orange for this one. And there's a big pink one right here. Adding a little bit of highlights to these ones that are out here. And a little bit baby yellow one right here. And then bring in some of these in to the middle here. Let's go ahead and do another couple of little baby ones right here. And then the 
these ones on the outer area are more orangey, so I'm going to start them, do them. In fact, I'm going to get some of this cadmium red light. So you started your <coughs> your challenge image this week? We did. <coughs> we did. We it's gonna be a long long process. Mm -hmm. Realize how detailed it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're painting a fishing village and uh here I'll show you the progress. Don't judge because it's definitely in the ugly stage. We just barely got the first layer on the but we got all of this is gonna be rocks lots of rocks all in here another big huge boat with lots of detail more rocks down here and then all these buildings and they have all kinds of stuff going on with them too so yeah lots of fun it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenging one for sure that's uh that's why i named him that I pick things that I haven't done usually, <laughs> you know, so they're, they're uh, seeing me work out, you know, details and things that uh, I, you know, those, those paintings that we do for that, for the patrons are, are usually like, you know, 10 hours, eight hours, you know, long. So they're, they're quite long and involved and we do them over several weeks so okay oh i love how this is turning out this is fun i think the key is just to um you know be going over these with multiple colors and when i'm adding these new colors on i'm just kind of barely kind of touching and, and swiping down so that they're not um they're not overwhelming the the whole thing it's just adding just a touch of color here and there and I really need to be careful because these are overlapping now so I have to make sure when I overlap that I have enough contrast with the ones b below when I add my new color on I'll go with a little bit more of the darker darker reds here Keep the lighter color toward the top and the middle of them, and then the light, the arm side, the darker color toward the top and the middle. No, sorry, let me go back. <laughs> Keep the darker color toward the bottom here, and the lighter color toward the top. And that way, when you overlap and do your next one, you've got that dark color underneath where the light tip is gonna hit. Our three main rules are. I know. Dark on the bottom. <laughs> I know. That was it. I, never, got my, I got confused with what I was saying. Never dying devotion to the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> we made four. Our four main rules yes. are. <laughs> All right, we, we'll go out, come we'll back go in. Back. We'll go back in later. And I don't think you, you use any of your glazing liquid yet, have you? No, I haven't. I'm getting some magenta here, getting a little bit of that cadmium red light. These two colors together make a really pretty red, and these some of these, especially these ones in the middle, are quite red. Okay, so there's one that's going from here and wiggling down.
me do a few more in here. Let me get some yellow and orange. A couple of Honestly, at this point they're all kind of blending. So how's Slim doing? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have pickle cam today? Is he, uh, oh, that's right. He's passed out, isn't he? Yes, he's all curled up. Fitz Pickle got all of his hair chopped off last, last week and, well, for his summer haircut. He's, he was a shaggy boy, that's for sure. And he's he's just trying to get used to it. It's so funny because he he used to like lay out and he used to get overheated and you know just like lay out and spread out and now he's like all curled up in a ball when he sleeps, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to maintain that body heat because he's not used to. But he likes to run. Oh yeah, he's he's like the jumpy jumpy boy now. He's. It's like having new shoes that come on real fast. Okay. I'm gonna do a couple that are just kind of coming up behind the fish here, and then we'll do these two are gonna be kind of in front of it, so I'm gonna start them, but we'll have to finish them later. Yeah, he's just all curled up is. there. What? He's just all curled up there. I know. He's just he's all trying to maintain his body heat. It's like I'm not used to having to do this. Usually too hot. Yeah, and then it was raining last night. Usually he would go out in the rain, no problem. Just Ooh. like you know, he wouldn't even feel sit it. Sit in it. You know, yeah, I just sit out there. And it was raining last night. He went out. It was the first time he'd been out since he'd gotten his hair cut. And he stopped. And he, like, looked around. And he was like, nope. And he came right back in. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, okay. Oh, heck no. What I, the heck is that? I know. <laughs> Some touching me. That doesn't feel right. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm so used to not feeling anything. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to stop there because I'm kind of... Need to finish, do our fish, and then we'll do a few little last touches on our coral here. Um, let me <clears throat> have you take that, hun, and dry it for me real good. And while he's doing that, I'll show you how to draw your fish. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just transfer mine on once we get it dry. But... So he's going to be filling up this area. So kind of what I what I do to start is just kind of get my get my idea of like where it's going to be. So it's like right on the third. So I know that the nose is here. The middle part is in the third here. So his the middle part of his face is going to be like right in in the middle third right here and right on that third that way. So that kind of lets me know. And then the tail is all the way out and to about right there. Okay, and then once I have that, I can kind of figure out, okay, his, he's this wide and maybe like twice as long, you know, so kind of figure out the width and then, you know, check and make sure that the width and the tail are about the same. Um, two lengths, one width. Does that make sense? And then I'm going to kind of do my face. It's got this... 
a squared off area right here where the eye is going to live and then this eye kind of sticks out this side right there then rounds out drops down and then their fish shape if I kind of do my tail here somewhere in here then from the from the tail it kind of curves up and out from the head it kind of comes there's like that little bump the eye bump right there and there's not a line right here necessarily well there is actually kind of one below that but kind of curves this way um, but whatever line that is that's going to be your mouth line too so make sure that you line your the bottom of your eyes up with your mouth and it kind of curves down like that his mouth is slightly open and the lips are kind of flattened out where they come reach the edge of the fishy. So it's kind of flat lips there. Curves like that. Round out the chin. And then comes back, there's a bump, and then it kind of does this long round thing like that and then the body is connected there like that okay so there's our basic body shape and then the that first stripe kind of comes up around the eye and back down around under the chin right there this black then we've got another white line and they meet up, kind of right up under the chin right here. A little bit darker there. And then it starts to curve up for this fin here. Curves back down, back out. And then it kind of does a long diagonal that matches the shape of this curve here. And then comes in pretty tight just before the tail. So like that. And then you've got their color that's going to be all in here. This is orange, a little orange spot, and then the black around it. White in here. And then on this side you've got the same thing. You've got this big fin coming up behind, and then if you want to you can kind of I'm down a diagonal to kind of meet up with that. So wherever this one comes down, it's going to meet up with this. This curves back. There. This one is a little bit smaller than this one, so I made it maybe a little bit too big. It's probably a little smaller than this. Somewhere like that. And then there's another little one right here, probably just from the back side. There's just like a slight, slight indication of something. And then the, the white curve here comes out and curves in like that. And this. And this is all black up and through here. Black bleeds out all the way to here and then right in here there's the little fin and it is like this little wing shape right here okay so there's our fishy and we've got a, a round eye that's dark in here like that okay I'm just going to quickly place him and see where I want to put him. All right, there. It's about right, I think. I'm trying to see where I've got my... That's good. Oop. Don't get paint on that.
And then I'm just going to quickly transfer on. Well, while you do that, I'll, I'll talk about Patreon. Okay. So patreon.com slash Angel of Fine Art. You can find traceables over there. At the time of this video, it's at the $2 level. Yeah, that's a traceable to all the videos back to February 2017. So you can download as many as you want, as many times as you want. At that. Yeah. <laughs> then the $5 level is a traceable. Plus, there's a bonus video, which we'll be doing tomorrow. And. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I think tomorrow's video is a vase of flowers. Yes. But also, you get access to all the previous bonus videos, too. So it's not just that one. And again, as much as you want to watch them. And then the $10 level is all that, plus the uh, special Facebook group. And, and the Thursday shows. And the them. Thursday challenge, which you showed earlier, which this month is this, the uh, seascape there. So. Yeah, they get their own private video that they right. get to watch on Thursdays. So. And don't have to listen to me. That's the key. <laughs> so that one's a little bit more. That's $10. Yeah, you have to pay extra for no mark. Right. <laughs> Except for he does kind of lurk. And, Sometimes I'll lurk and chat. And chat and, and throw me yeah. ridiculous questions. I can't but remember what you were asking yesterday. <laughs> Sometimes we have people that will come into the videos here on YouTube and one of their first questions is, is this oils or acrylic? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what you were asking me. <laughs> and not to be rude, but in the title of each video, <laughs> she puts acrylic yes. painting. So Very true. <laughs> there's, there's that. <laughs> but anyway, there's all kinds of fun things to go on over there, too. So Yeah. And it support the channel. Yeah, exactly. And we thank you. I think there's, what, 3,500? Something like on. that. People right now, so we really appreciate it. It's yes, incredible. And a reminder that Patreon Keeps is our videos free YouTube, right? And uh, so Patreon is a monthly subscription, so it goes from the first of the month to the end of the month. So depending on when you're watching this video, keep that in mind. Okay, got them all in there. Yes. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and start on our fishy. So I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush for this. I'm going to get my 3 8 inch angle. I'm going to spray my paints because they're starting to get dry. And first thing I need to do is just re reintroduce the yellow in here because it's pretty dark. So I'm going to use the cadmium yellow light and my white and fill in this little forehead right here where it's the brightest with that and this one over the top of his face so I'm just gonna paint over it for now we'll put it back in later and that one's actually was supposed to be behind him so That'll just help me have a little bit more of that yellow color to play against when I add my orange on top of it. I can't see my drawing at all. chins more orange so I'm gonna go ahead and get the orange here and just use that down there. Okay. I'm not doing a whole lot right now but just kind of filling in 
some color. What this yellow will do is just give me a little bit of, of lighter color to work against so that when I add my oranges and things on top, it, it'll, it'll be brighter underneath and the color will be more vivid. I feel like I should be doing play by play here. <laughs> She's using an angly brush, painting on some yellowy color, adding some orangey color now. <laughs> yes. So the artist, you know, went to college in Arizona. She was, it's been self-taught, been painting for the last 35 years. Oh, did you see what she just did there? Amazing. <laughs> we should see that on replay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's not like a sporting event. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> She's dabbled with other painting mediums before. Not really. Well, you've you've done gouache. Yeah, gouache a little bit. I like like two paintings so far. <laughs> two incredible paintings. And then uh, watercolors. I bought myself a bunch of watercolors during COVID, thinking that I would you know start something new. I don't know. Last year I was just like in since a, you were going to have to work from mood. home. Well, I do work from home all the time, but oh. <laughs> but I. I just thought, I don't know, I just felt like I wanted to try. Well, we what it was, was we were sitting outside a lot on the back porch, and I wanted to be able to paint out there, but then I realized that I, I don't really want to work on my days off. So, you know, I need to rest my arm. Use a little bit of that orange Academy Red light there. And then I'm just going to use the yellow orangey color. That yellow had dried, so I'm just kind of adding my second coat here, making it a little bit more yellow. The bottom of the fish is going to be that cadmium red light, and then the medium the medium orange is going to be that orange, that orange with a little bit of yellow in it, and then these bright areas on the face are really pretty yellow. I like this color, this cadmium yellow deep, but it's actually I'm, now that I'm seeing it, it really is kind of almost the cadmium yellow light. I'm going to put another layer of that on there with some white. Okay, and then down here, it's really pretty close to the color that it already is. So I'm going to get a little bit of that quinacridone burnt orange and my cadmium red light. And just kind of blend these two together right here on the underbelly coming up. And then do some more of it on this one.
Okay, and then I need to do the tail there too. Get some of that yellow. And if you want to, um, if you don't want to, you know, use the transfer, you can draw onto your canvas with chalk. I was contemplating doing that, but I wanted to make sure that I had time to draw it on paper for you because it's easier to see it on paper than it is on a canvas. So that way, if you want to draw it. But I would say I would I would draw it on on paper and then that way you've got that paper always so you can use it, you know, again and again and, you know, in case you or you could, you know, and you could even take it and use colored pencils or something on it eventually or, or watercolor even if you have it in a book that's a good um, good quality paper and you can use it for, you know, whatever you want to later. But when you draw it straight onto the canvas, you kind of lose the you lose the drawing, you know, when you paint over it. So I much prefer drawing onto paper and then transferring it onto my canvas. It's just I think it's better get better results. All right. Let's do now. His white parts are not actually white. If you look at them really closely, they're really blue. So it's reflecting the blue around him, I guess. So I'm going to use the blue. He, but they probably are white if you just pull them out of the water. But because of the reflections in the water and whatever, it's he's white picks up the colors around it. So his. White is turning blue here, which gives him a really cool look. And his black areas are blue too. So he's probably an aquarium fish, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's got some blue lights or some ultraviolet lights or something shining on him. I don't know. I remember at the aquarium in Atlanta. It was a very big draw for all the kids. They had the that exhibit with the clownfish in it. Mm hmm Yeah, it's so they're so fun to watch. Yeah, I was looking at different photos, but I really liked the colors in this one. I just I really like the orange and blue contrast between the orange and blue because they're opposite on the color wheels and so this is just a really vibrant um, vibrant contrast to have him with all this blue okay and then at the bottom of the belly is dark I'm going to get a little bit of purple a little bit my old rain blue is gone. Excuse me. <laughs> Monitors messing up my paint. Your paints are banging the monitor. Well, you moved it in the way of my paints. They're always where they're at. You moved your monitor in the way of my paint, so therefore they have right away. Oh, yep, that's the way it works. Sorry. All right. Um, using some of this thalo blue light with my ultramarine blue, and I'm just gonna do the bottom of his belly with this color. I'm just kind of tapping to get the them to blend. He's got the scales, so he's not he's not a smooth-bodied, you know, individual. He's got 
scales and things happening so we can kind of let the paint be a little bit more mottled where it goes on. Whoop. There we go. Get a little bit more of the teal for this one over here. Yeah, I think I'm going to use some of this teal. Only just kind of right there. And then the rest of it. And this one is actually pretty light, so I'm going to do more white up there. This was the fin right here, if you wondered what I was doing there. Really probably could have waited until I did my black stripes for that. sticky so I just need to spray them use my scraper here and scrape off the parts I don't need right now This is a glass palette, so it kind of scrapes right off. Very handy. All right, what am I doing? Back to the fishy. So here's the light thalo and cobalt heel. Maybe a little bit of thalo blue. soaking up that water at this point and they're pretty they're pretty dried out so they're gonna be a little bit thicker somebody was asking about that earlier so just add water to rejuvenate them as long as they're not dry to where they're leaving you know like little clumps and things there they can be wetted down again and rejuvenated Okay, so the light color on top. We just need another second coat on this one now. It's dry. Okay, and then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use my white. It's pretty bright. Once we get that black on there, it'll be really like, ta-da! I'm gonna put a little bit of this 
light blue on the back of his tail right here around the outside of the black. Just a little bit of a fuzz of, it might be in the photograph or the whatever, but this, I was seeing a little bit of something around his tail there in the photo, so hopefully it's there, I don't know. There's a little bit of blue on the lips right here. I'm gonna put that right on the outside of the lips. And then I'm gonna do another layer of my my oranges get that cadmium red meaty red light here and get it right there add some right in here and this is what I was saying you know I, I'm not going to um, paint in the scales so if you wanted to do that you could take the time to do that here but I'm just gonna kind of if you if you dab with dab with the tip of the brush you can kind of get that scale like feeling so I'm just gonna do that instead so I'm not gonna go through and do all of these little scales Good plan. What are we doing for time? Three and a half? Okay. Since it does make any sound, I'm helping make it more Thanks. realistic. Pew pew. Pew pew. Sorry. Pew pew. Yeah. All right. Getting the yellow deep or dark. Cadmium yellow dark and the cadmium orange here. And kind of put in that red, you know, kind of sloppy there, but we're cleaning it up here. Under the eye there. a little bit right up at the top right there where that black is too much water and then get that cadmium yellow light here really vibrant yellow Let's do the, get that cadmium red light here. I'm gonna use it in the middle for the mouth there, opening. Just a little indication there, and then there's just the slightest bit of, like an outline around the mouth. Just the slightest little dip, like right here, where you can see the Outline of the lips. Right 
There we go. I'm going to use that really dark red right up underneath the eye, right there. Okay, and then I'm going to get that dark red and some magenta, if I've got any left. The red and magenta cami red light. I'm going to use it. get the orangey yellow. This is that cadmium yellow dark. get some of this light yellow get some cadmium yellow medium and light both maybe a little touch of white just to make it a little bit more opaque if you're using a yellow that's translucent um, or transparent you're going to need to add white to your yellow to make this work otherwise it won't show up at all over top of the darker colors there and then a little bit right there and again just kind of use the tip of the brush to kind of dab scale like And this will probably dry a little bit darker. I'm gonna get a little bit of the orange. This area is more kind of orange than yellow, right in the middle here, so I'm gonna use that to kind of fill in this area again. It may take three coats to get that background covered. So just kind of know that going in, that's pretty normal. It's not it's not gonna cover on the first layer because these layers these colors are so light, these oranges. And they dry darker. So, you know, they may look just right when you put it on and then it ends up drying darker. <laughs> so you may have to do it two or three times or go on with it a little bit lighter than you think you need. And then it might dry just the right color, you know. All right, let's go ahead and add our black. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush here. I think I'm gonna use the round number four for this. So I'm gonna get the black, just a little, I'm gonna use the same color as we used up here in the background. So I'm gonna use that purple and ultramarine blue. So kind of equal parts purple and ultramarine blue and just like a touch of black in there to darken it up. Purple's already like the darkest color. The doxazine purple is the, like the darkest color on your palette. So it, it, you know, you can't really, as far as the, you know, value goes, it's pretty darn dark. <laughs> you know, it's about as dark as you can get, um, you know, in your, in your black is going to compare so um you could do black for this instead 
but I think this purple is going to be prettier, and it actually is in our photograph. If you look closely, the purple is kind of shining in the black. Again, probably because of the lighting in the photograph, but that's okay. Uh, you know what? I think I put my... I feel like my tail's a little bit on the white side there. I don't think I did it right. shifted my drawing when I did my tail here because I feel like it's I brought it out too far I think well I'm not sure I, I, no, I don't think so. you don't think so do you think this goes all the way up mm -hmm. okay all right and maybe I'm supposed to bring my orange back up in there I think my black area is a little too big right there Just add enough water to it so that it flows off pretty easily for you. Okay, and then we'll come back in here and kind of fuzz out these edges because they're kind of blurry in the photograph. So when you put it on, if you kind of wiggle your brush a little bit and fuzz it out, it'll kind of help. I'm going to kind of go over the edges of the other colors that way, and then I'm going to go back in with my orange at the very end and fuzz out all these edges and that will make it look kind of blurry the way it is in our photo. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that ultra beam blue and every now and then I'm seeing just like a little pop of this, oops, that's the zinc white. Every now and then I'm seeing like a little pop of this light blue so I'm going to put that See that? Using that teal that's in the tail there. So somebody had asked if this would wind up in a in our grandchild's room. Mm. I said, "Well, <clears throat> right now he's into dinosaurs." I know. So I think I know an upcoming painting subject for you. Yeah, I did. Or series. I've had that suggested before. Oh. That Somebody must have been a pretty smart person. Suggested dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I found one that was... The only problem with dinosaurs is there's no photographs of them. What? <laughs> so you're having to use other people's um, artworks of, you know, the dinosaurs to do them. Mm. So there's a, that can be tricky. 
I'm not an expert. Are you sure there's no pictures? Pretty sure. Pretty sure. So, well, if you have any photographs of them, I'd be interested. Somebody can contact me. <laughs> yeah, we have some... I, you know, I think that if I was to do them, I'd probably just do a, like a silhouettes of some sort, you know, just make it a little bit easier, possibly. Isn't that fun? All right, I'm going to use this color as a glaze while I'm thinking about it. I'm seeing a little area right here where I want to glaze. That shadow right there. Just filling in what what is happening <laughs> Was it like that on Tuesday? My Tuesday video is very low numbers. I think it's because of the the pandemic uh, wear down of everybody, mm -hmm. and the weather's nice, mm -hmm. and it's spring. Yeah. So. Yeah, I need to bring that out a little bit right there. seeing just a dark area. This is the fun part for me because then you start to it starts to see looks like something, mm -hmm. you know. So can can you explain the use of the glazing liquid? Yes. Um, that will thin out the paint so that you can um, put a little transparent um, color on it just if you didn't use the glazing medium the and just used water um, the color is um, well these the heavy body acrylics have more binder than like your craft acrylics or things that you know where you can add as much water as you want with craft acrylics but with Heavy body acrylics, you have to kind of be aware of how much water you're adding to them. And so the glazing medium allows me to thin out these paints to a very transparent, um, thin color. And that way I can go as thin as I want with the, with the paint and put a transparent layer on. That makes sense. If I explain that right, but I'm in that fuzzy art brain thing right now where I'm 
<laughs> kind of toward the end of the painting where my brain is just kind of starting to fry from having to talk and paint at the same time. Let's, let's try it sometimes. It's not easy to talk coherently while you're painting. It's stretches your stretches your brain muscles. <laughs> I have a rough time sitting there doing nothing and talking coherently. <laughs> Yeah, so... So, yeah. It's, uh... And which brush is this? This is number four round. Numero cuatro. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say thank you to Ooh. the people who sent monies. People sent monies. Yes. Yeah, and then somebody sent us coasters, too. Oh, and coasters. Yeah, we got gifts this week in the mail. We did. Um, there was another one that I was going to... Oh, well. Um, there was a, somebody wrote... No. These are the ones, this one, I don't think we mentioned this one. She sent us money, too. So mm -hmm. those three. And the super chat at the end, and then that's the coasters. But then there was a card that I got, too, that I was going to mention. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, okay. Oh, it's probably over there. Okay, sorry. So we got a card in, in money for Mary? Yes. Thank you for the wonderful card. It doesn't smell like chocolate, but it's okay. It's all right. Very cool card. And then we got a card in money from Marsha. If I remember correctly. Oh, it's stuck. It should say on the end, outside yeah. of it. Marcia, yeah. Right. And... You could say their last names, I think. I don't think they would care. Then we got a card and money from Brenda. So thank you very much. Yes. Incredible. I know. So sweet. You guys are amazing. Very, very sweet. Really nice cards, too. Maybe mm -hmm. tear up a little, little bit. <laughs> sitting, sitting on the back porch, enjoying the evening. Mm -hmm. It had rain, so it was nice and clean and clear. And mm hmm and opening the cards that we got in the mail was just, you know, it, it's cool. a, it is very moving. So, mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys sending mail. I I will. I have not responded to any mail since like before Christmas, so I'm really, really, really behind on that. So if you've sent me something and I haven't replied yet, I'm sorry. I will. I will be replying. I just. I, I really have no excuse. I've just been taking. <laughs> Been lazy about it. And so somebody's asked how do you send mail? If you click the uh, show more, or it might be a down arrow or a like little carrot thing, depending on what device you're using, you can see a list of all of the painting supplies and links to the brush guys and Amazon to buy things. And keep on scrolling on down, you see the social media, Patreon, and then there's our mailing address. It's a P.O. box. So you can send PO Box one two one seven one. Yes. Russellville seven two eight one two. Russellville, Arkansas. Yep. Seven two eight one two. And it's A R for Arkansas. Not A K. Right, that's Alaska. Right. So anyways, you know, and if it doesn't fit in our little PO box, they'll they they have a larger boxes. So you can send really big boxes of chocolate. And they'll and they'll it, it'll fit. Yeah, okay. don't yeah, no. don't worry. It you know, doesn't have to be like little small ones. <laughs> <coughs> we just watched somebody's gonna send you I'm using black hair and I'm using that purple around the mm -hmm. outside, but I'm gonna use the black hair for the actual people just to make it really dark. And then on this side there's just a little hint of the eyeball. 
peeking over, but it's very kind of translucent. So I'm going to go ahead and use this bluish color with my white and you do that with that. So yeah, when we first got the PO box and then it renewed or something like that it here too. And the post office didn't renew it or something. And then they no, sent, they, they sent return yeah. stuff to people with our home address on it. Right. <laughs> Right. It's like a, the whole reason why we use a P.O. box is so we don't give out our personal right. home address. <laughs> so why did you do that? Well, because the post office guy, I, I asked him how to have our P.O. box because I, you know, I didn't want to have to go pick up the mail at the post office. I wanted it to come to the house if oh, possible. Right. And they right. told me to do a change of address on it. And I'm like, okay. You know, like to forward and, it to our address Right, to here. forward yeah. it to our house. So what that did was cancel out our our P.O. box. So not only, yeah, did they return the mail, they uh, they sent people our personal email, our personal address, home address, yeah. yeah. I was not happy with that dude. <laughs> and I went back in and complained. And he was there, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, he yeah. was there. I don't know that he remembered, you know, that it was him that told me that a year before, but um, I did. <laughs> All right, here's the green, orange here. I'm just going to do a little orange highlight in the eye. They, they actually don't have a, like, a highlight in their eye, which kind of is, like, creepy looking. But that's just how it is, so they're, you know. That's just the way it is. Oh. Okay. This. So I'm going with orange here, and I'm just going to go over the edges of some of this black. What? This one is definitely getting lasers. That's all I know. Laser eyes? Oh, yeah. Just look at the look in his face. He does have laser eye look. Hey, they all, I think all fish look a little bit pissed about something. You know, they... They just look a little bit mad at the world. I'm not really sure why. Sorry if that's offensive to somebody. In some parts of the world, it, it means it's, it means they're drunk. drunk. That's true. It does. I didn't think so. That. Maybe they're a little tipsy. I don't know. Maybe they're. Maybe that too. Okay, using some orange here, some my yellow. And I'm gonna bring this one out a little bit more on this side. This tail. And I'm pretty happy with the the look overall. I think we got him pretty close. Let's go ahead and do our little last few um, anemone, and we'll be done. I think I'm going to use the smaller filbert this time, just to make it a little easier to control it. And get some of that orange. Let's see what color I want to do. Let's go with some burnt orange. Orange and some of the... Whoops, I don't have any magenta. Get some of that magenta. to do that kind of bright orangey red and this one goes all the way up here well we kind of placed it just about right right there and I'm going to add some white because he doesn't want to cover up that black there That is interesting. What is interesting? Oh, just, you know, pinning over that and it, it just didn't cover it. 
Well, these Those are, are transparent yeah. colors too, mm-hmm. so that help. That's and, probably why. Yeah, just a very interesting demonstration of mm-hmm. what you say. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. We'll let those dry, and while they're drying, I'm going to just add white and yellow tips to them. some of these. and stuff. Getting some more of the magenta here. Missing one in here somewhere. There's probably one right here. Let's just do a small one right here. So, what level are we putting this painting at? Um, I would not put it at like a beginner beginner. Huh? I wouldn't put it at a beginner beginner. No, I don't think it's a it's a first time beginner for sure. But I do think that it's. I mean, it's just got a lot of small... If you've got good brush control, then, you know, I think that it's definitely doable. It's mm-hmm. it's It's got a lot of detail in the fish, mostly. This part I don't think are too difficult, you know. I think that these are pretty... Pretty easy. For the most part, I think the hardest part is just getting the layering down, you know, because the layering can be a little bit tricky. So I would say like around a four out of ten. Yeah, something like that. A three point four or five, you know. Ooh, well four to five, so maybe like a four point one seven three nine. Right. Okay. Is that pi? No, no, honey, that is not pi. What is pi? Well, we passed pi day. 3.19? Close. Yeah, there you go. I knew it. I just had to think about it. Okay. Maybe it's pi in the art world. Just ah. just saying, I don't know. You, you artists are kind of strange. True. I mean, like in engineering, like we say it's the red wire. Not the thalo quinacridone red shade <laughs> wire. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch to this blender here and use it to do the tips of these. And I kind of stipple on some. These have like a little bit of texture. I kind of made that a mess of that one. I didn't do very good job. Let me clean that up. Well, you clean that up. We got a question about okay. paints. All right. The person would like to know, are soft body paints good for blending? Are and are they easier to use than the like the heavy body paints? Um, they are easier to put to they flow better, but um as far as like blending things, I actually think that the heavy body acrylics give you more time to blend. Because I think the softer body paints tend to dry faster. So, um, you know, if that's a concern, I would 
I would go with the heavier body paints. You can always thin them down. So, you know, you can take a heavy body paint and just thin it down. And uh, that's why I use them, because then you can do everything, you know, that you want with it. Uh, the the heavier body paints will give you a little bit more dry and a little bit more time to bl to blend too. So, um, and for things like dry brushing, you really you really can't do that that much. Not it's it's easier with a thicker paint to do blending and things, uh, or to do dry brushing than with the thinner paints too. So keep that in mind as well. I'm using some pink hair. Now this is, I'm just being fussy with this, so you know, this is just the last little bit that I'm adding for extra detail on these, but you could leave them like we did here and be just fine with it. So it's up to you whether or not you want to go back through and add a little bit more detail to them. It still doesn't want to cover that spot. And it's really not. Hmm. Not covering. There we go. Get some of that cadmium orange there that's more opaque. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the blue and purple. Use that down here to darken up this side of it. color here for that one down there and then there's some of it on some of these too down at the very base I think I'm going to use the no I'll use this one I don't want to dirty up another brush Use the three eighths inch angle here. I'm just gonna get that color on the very tip of my brush. I'm gonna use this magenta and yellow color that I was using before. And just go through here and dab it on the tips of these. Use some yellow on some of them, the yellow and white. The white helps it be more opaque. It's 
some of these I didn't do all that great, so I'm just going to come back to them and add a little bit more of the darker color. But How are we doing on time? Good. Right at two hours. We are almost I'm, done. I'm doing great. Good. I got all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm just hanging with you, so it doesn't really matter. Good. I try to keep the Saturday ones to around two hours, so. Especially before the bonus video weekend. Yeah. Put your arm to the test because you're being on Tuesday, mm -hmm. then on Thursday, then on Saturday, and then on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, then on Sunday, then on Tuesday, then right. on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like bang, 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 yeah, bang. Yeah, I only have a day off in between usually. And then the bonus video weekends, I only have two days. I have no day off in between. So that those, those days my arm gets can feel it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It feels it. But that way we don't miss out on having a video on this Saturday before. Because we used to do that when we very first started. We just didn't do a video on the Saturday before on YouTube. And instead we did the video on, you know, for patrons. So, but... Now we do it on a separate day. So now I'm going through here and just adding some brighter orange to the middle of some of these. That's going to make them look like they're glowing. And the translucent look. Use a little bit of the magenta here with some white. Highlight these ones in the back. Give them a shadow if they need them. The the anemone are not not true to the photo. I kind of fudged them, so they're a little bit off from the photo, but. Close. I think they'll be okay with that. I think I think we're almost there. I mean they're just kind of like supporting actors or background who what do they call them? You know, extras on the set. Extras. Yeah. So I mean it's really not important. <laughs> Besides, you already insulted them anyways by calling them coral, so. True. True doubt. They're like, whatever, girlfriend. This is where I was going to use the zinc white. Because it's kind of got that transparent look. So 
switch back down to the round. Getting some yellow. I'm going to go up by this, these tips with the yellow. Right up under that white. A little bit of pink. A little bit of that magenta with my white hair. I'm just going to go real bright. Again, just Use a little bit of it to kind of make the outside of it glow. Coming down. And medium orange and magenta here. Really bright red. And honestly, you can stop at any point that you're happy with yours. So, you know, you don't have to do all of this. I'm just kind of adding little bits to mine here. What are you laughing at? Well, like you said, you know, they can stop anytime they want to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these little strokes and the different tones and different colors are just giving you that more realistic, right. layered look. Right, yeah. Yes.
It's using that darker tone, just outlining and defining some of these that are, you know, kind of blending one into another so that I can kind of tell which one's which. Some of them you don't really care, you know, some of these ones in the back are it's not that important, but some of these ones that are our focal point ones in the in the front here I want I want them to have a little bit more um, attention. Okay, is there anything left? I think I, I think um, my white could use one more coat on my fish and then I'm gonna done, be done. And I'm going to use a little bit more of the teal, yellow, blue in a couple places here. I'm seeing. So light thalo blue, just the white with the thalo blue, and then the teal. color up here. You're just typing away over there. Mm -hmm. What you typing about? Oh, I'm answering questions. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not talking. I can answer some. Okay. You want me to? So they want to know is that when they're completed with the painting, should they spray something on it to help keep it longer? Yes, you should varnish it. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. That matches my answer. <laughs> and in the beginner series, you went over varnishing. I did. In one of the videos. I don't remember which I one. I, uh, it's, a, it's the dark. The dark stream. Dark stream. Yeah. Yeah, because it's mentioned on there. In the title. In the title. Yep. So that was just done a couple weeks ago. So check right. it out on the channel. Yeah. Shows how, and I tell different different products that you can use for it. Okay, the next question is, is there a video on how to do stick man? Yes. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. You are two for two. You're doing good. Do you want to go on to the bonus round? or No. I don't have to answer questions. It's fine. <laughs> Just be <being> silly. <laughs> And it is in oh, YouTube, right? Stepping on your toes there. What? It's on YouTube, right? It's the, not in the Facebook yeah, the, group. The, the stickman? Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. No, I get all the easy questions. You get the hard questions. Okay. All righty. I think we are done. I think I could go a little bit darker down here. So might, um, you know, just like at the very end here, go in with a little bit of the blue purple and glaze it. Ultramarine blue and a little bit of purple. That's that glaze that we were using on the fish too. And we can just add a little. Glazing down below. 
here. This is where I was saying before, you know, that's kind of hard to tell, you know, before we get our fish in there where, you know, where our dark colors need to be. So we can go back in here and kind of darken up some of these. Make sure we've got good contrast. That's the main thing. All right, I think we're, we'll call that done. I like this one. I think this one would be a good companion to our starfish that we did, or not starfish, our um, um, seahorse that we did last year. I think that oh, yeah. I think that they would go to good together. Just using the paper towel to kind of dab off any extra that you don't want. Sign it and I'll be done here. Okay, somebody would like to know, is glazing liquid the same as blending medium or floating medium? Um, they're all probably a, very similar as far as they're probably all, you know, some sort of an acrylic binder. Um, but they'll do different things. A floating medium is, um, you'll see in craft paint. So it's a craft paint, you know, kind of material it wouldn't be one that you would see with the heavy body acrylic usually I don't think um at least I haven't seen it I'm going to go ahead and put some of this coral in front of this here and I'm just seeing that I've missed that um but I mean you can use it with your your you know better paints but if you're if you're using craft paints um then you know you can use those um What was the other one? The the question is the is it the same as floating medium, floating medium. or blending medium? Blending medium. Um, I don't really know what blending medium is. I think th those all sound like they're they craft acrylic uh, mediums. Um, so yes, you can use them. Um, I wouldn't use the blending medium or floating medium for glazing, though. I mean, that's not what it's meant for necessarily so um it probably would work fine it's just the blending mediums are if they're like an extender sometimes they can make your paints feel like a little sticky like or um give it a weird texture so just kind of be aware of that um I'm just adding a little bit more of the white highlights here and there um the the glazing medium that I use has an extender in it, so it um, it'll give you a little bit extra drying time as you're working, and it does it does help with blending some. I don't use it um, that much for blending any as as much. Um, okay, there we go. Go to super chat. All right, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add more colors on here. Get some magenta. I didn't turn on the disco cam, so there it is. <laughs> so, yes, we have a super chat or two or more. So the first one is from Patty, and she says, another inspiring tutorial. Oh, thank you, Patty. The next one is from Daniela. She says, I started watching your video two years ago, and now... I create in many other mediums, sell my original work online, and I'm pursuing my journey as a full-time artist. That's amazing. Thank you for being my virtual mentor. Wow. <laughs> That's really cool, Daniela. That's awesome. Then from Maggie, and she says, thank you. These colors have brightened a cloudy, dull day. Oh. And then Patty says, since the glass palette and scraper that I learned about from you changed my life yeah. as a painter, I figured I should chip in. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Oh, that's sweet. And that's then great. One last one from Tinker says, one dollar from each of my little painters who say hello. Oh, thank you. So Who they're, they're, who's your little painters? Do they have the, she the name? No, she didn't name them. Oh. So they're watching because of, I guess, the reference to that 
there's a movie apparently that's got a clownfish in it. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nemo. <laughs> oh, is that one? Oh. <laughs> I love that show. So I've probably watched that movie like a bazillion <laughs> times when my kids were little. <laughs> so thank you to Tinker and to Patty and to Maggie and to Daniela and yes. to Patty. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. That's so sweet. Very sweet. All right. I'm um, I'm just tinkering now. I'll take a speaking, <laughs> speaking of tinkering. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, but this, this is really fun. These anemone are actually really fun. Really fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a hard time stopping because they're you, so fun. You could just put on some music and just I know I could and just disappear kind of for a few dab. hours. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're uh, they're that fun. I'm gonna get a little bit of the orange here. Put a pop of bright orange in some of these. So, yeah, if you try this, you can share it with me on my social media. I've got all the links down in the description for that. And um, also for um, where to buy the materials that I use. If you use our links, it helps our channel um, support them. We get a little bit of uh, – it doesn't cost you any more, but it helps us. And um, what else? Um, you can share the videos. That, that helps us. So if you, you know, if you know – uh, when you paint it or something like that, when you share it on your social media, if you'll like either link to the video or mention the video with it, that um, really helps, you know, get the word out of what we're doing, these free videos on YouTube. And um, yeah, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us on a Saturday. It's been a lot of fun. This one's, he's a cute little guy. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it too. So, all right, we'll see you guys later and we'll be back for uh, our patrons this uh, tomorrow. So if you're part of our Patreon crew, the video links are all um, on Patreon. If you click on there, you, there's still time to join. Um, if you click on the patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art or just Google Angela Anderson Patreon, it'll come up in the Google search. But um, and you can check that out if you're interested in joining us tomorrow for the Go ahead and show the classical vase that we're going to be painting. It's really pretty. Yes. Or never, or don't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Saturday. Image. Bonus. Bonus image. Here it is. Yeah. So we'll be painting that tomorrow. And hopefully, hopefully about four, maybe maybe five hours, but hopefully four. We'll see. Mark says I need to simplify it. Considering that just one of those flowers can take me two hours on YouTube or longer, uh, I think we're going to do them a little bit more impressionistic style, maybe not super full realism. But who knows? I always say that, and then I end up doing like this and going back in. <laughs> <laughs> going for realism. That's just what I'm drawn to. So, All right. I'm going to quit there. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.